Okay, so we're going to have a look at option B. Option B is about finding fixtures which are outstanding. And not only do we need to print out the fixtures which are outstanding, we need to count how many there are and uh, print that too. So what we're going to do is look at the code which we have already uh, written here and look at some of the similarities that we can have. So we can see that um, this is going to be similar to option A. Uh, we don't need to give any kind of fixture number and we're still going to make use of the data that we get from reading this file. So we want it to work exactly like uh, this function and we've got some headings to print out. So that bit is uh, straightforward to do. So we're going to call this option B. Um, option B, we don't need to give it anything and uh, we need to keep um, uh, a variable so which is going to hold all of the uh, uh, which is going to hold the list which this function gives us back and what this function gives us back is a, a, a list of data a list of lists which we can then iterate through. Iterating means using a for loop to go through one row at a time. So let's just remind ourselves of what this is. So this is um, all data from fixtures file and it's in a form which we can process. So we know we need to go through this one uh, row at a time. So let's just have a look at the data first to see how we're going to get hold of all of the outstanding fixtures. So here I've opened up the fixtures file um, in Excel and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, split all of these up um, just, just like our function does, our get data function. So let's just have a look at this data. It's separated on a comma and then um, we can finish. Okay, so this is what our data looks like. So if I scroll all the way down, ah, okay, this is interesting because fixtures which have not been played, the outstanding fixtures do not have a Y um, written in that element of the list or in that um, column if we were looking at it in Excel. So what we want to do is we want to go through all of the data and pick out the ones where, um, well, there's two things really that we could pick out. We could pick out either the ones where it doesn't say why, or we could pick out the ones where the last element doesn't have any data in it. So now we know the two conditions that we're looking for, we can carry that out in our program here. So let's just see the first way of doing this. So we want to charge through um, all of the rows. So we're going to use a for loop. So we're going to have a temporary variable um, and we're going to go through all lines, which is our variable declared here, uh, which is not the same as the variable here, even though we've given it the same name. I've only given it the same name just to keep it uh, consistent. No other reason these ca this can be called something else entirely, but it's just the variable that holds the information that this function gives us back. So let's go through this. So we're going to go through all of this. So we're going to say something like if, um, well, the information about not uh, playing the game. If we have a look, that is held in, that's that will be temp 0, temp 1, temp 2, temp 3, temp 4 and temp 5. So the first thing we can do is just check temp 5. So we could say if temp 5 and we could just say does not equal to, so we can just say that. Um, if it does not equal to Y, so there's a capital Y there, then what we'd like is why don't we just print out, for the minute, why don't we just print out um, the whole of temp 
which means it'll just print it as a list. So why why don't we just do that to see whether this is um, uh, going to work? Um, and again, just to remind ourselves of what we're looking for, the first um, the first one that it should print out for us is uh, fixture number one hundred and twenty two, and it's got asterisk two thousand R and R um, X mex playing. So uh, that's what we're expecting when we run this function. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've just saved the file and run it, uh, uh, or pressed F5. So now I'm going to run option B. And so there it's printing out the data for me. So let's just scroll to the top and make sure. Yeah, there it is. The very first one is number 122. And actually, then what we get is going all the way to the end of the file, 190. And we can double check that by just having a look at the data in um, Excel and yes we're going from 122 to 190 those were the ones which were not uh, have not yet been played so it's giving us the correct information and we need to tidy up the printing so that it fits with just showing this information um, just uh, oh whoops sorry that's option C just showing this information fixture number date time and the two uh, players involved. We then also need to do this other part, which is counting how many uh, fixtures have not yet been played. So let's uh, see how we're going to do that. So I've put in the required headings at the top. Um, I removed spaces uh, just for now to make sure that works. And then um, what we already did in option A is we assigned all of the different um, elements from one row to these variable names. So what's quite nice is because we've used the variable temp again here, we can actually just copy this and tidy up the information over here. So if uh, the last element is found to be to not have Y, then maybe we can paste in this value here and now instead of printing temp we can just print out the the elements that we require so we want fnum printed and then we want the date printed um, so i'm just looking at the headings that i've put at the top there and then nick1 followed by nick2 and we can happily ignore um, all of the other elements there. So this might require some tabs and that might require some spacing out uh, but that we're going to look at um, in a while. So let's just make sure that this hasn't caused any errors and it works. So I'm just going to save the file um, and then run this. And now I should be able to uh, type in option B over here and it should print out all of the various um, categories there uh, which is great so it has printed out the data required so the last thing um, that we need to do before we think about tidying up the printing is just keeping a running total of the fixtures which are outstanding and the easiest way to do this given that we're going through our, um, using a for loop what we can do is we can, outside of our for loop, is we can declare a running total. So maybe we can just call this running total, or you could call it total outstanding. So this is going to start off at zero. So we can say that what we're doing here is we are um, initialize the variable, which basically means give it a value, start it off as zero outside of our for loop and then what we want to do is we only want to count if we come across any elements um, where the game hasn't been played so the element number five in each line if it says y then what we want to do is we want to count or add one to our running total so if this condition is true obviously go ahead and do your printing but what we'd also like you to do while inside the if 
is we'd like to increase the running total by one and we do that by just saying whatever's in running total already add one to it so it will do that which is fine and then the last thing we want to do this this printing hap is happening while we are iterating through each row and the total outstanding we want to write after we have finished iterating through everything so what we'd want to do is our last outstanding total needs to be printed at the same um, level that we're printing our titles right at the top so it's outside of the if and it's outside of the for loop so what we're going to do is we're going to print um, I think the heading asked for is total outstanding so that's what we'd like to print and then what we're going to do is we would like to print our running total here so if I save and run this now, so let's check option B and this time we're just checking the outstanding. So there's total outstanding, it says 69. So let's just double check that that is um, actually correct. So this is the number that we're adding up. I think we can do this automatically here in Excel. So I'm just going to highlight all the way down to here and just out of range here it's counted up the number of rows I've highlighted, number of cells and so that is um, accurate. So let's uh, close this. Okay so that's option B finished apart from tidying up the printing which uh, we can do right at the end and so in the next video we'll look at option C.